You can't just make yourself in charge because you want to be in charge. We're, we're talking about our nation is going through what is supposed to be the peaceful transference of power. I don't know how peaceful it is. I don't know how transference it is, but that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be the peaceful transference of power. Power is transferred, not created, not self-induced. It is transferred from one to the other. Somebody has to convey power unto you. Transference of power is the very reason that John pointed out Jesus uh, when he was standing in the Jordan River and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. He pointed him out. He empowered him. Transference of power. Then after that, he says, I must decrease that he might increase. Transference of power. Why are you teaching this? We are in the middle of the change. The changing of the guard, the changing of the world, the changing of times. We are right in the middle of not just the charge, not just the challenge, but we are in the middle of change. And change is uncomfortable. My wife, when she was grieving the loss of her loss of her mother, I told her the only thing you can do is be to the kids what she was to you, thereby keeping her alive in your behavior. She died, left you in charge. The older saints are passing off the scene. You're in charge. Are you ready to grow up and stand up and be the person that you were created to be? Or are you stuck in the student's role, knees locked up under a desk, books up under your seat, and you don't know when to get up out of that chair and walk up to the front of the class and teach the course? Let me go, mama, I got it. No, my time of tutelage was not over. I fell because I left too soon. The prodigal son fell because he went too soon. We are seeing massive failures out of good people, good people making bad mistakes because they went too soon. Paul says, I will tell you when to go. Now is the time to go. I can tell it's time for you to start because I'm empty. I can tell that you are full because I'm drained. <laughs> I can tell that you are ready because I'm finished. Do you have a who in your life that pours into you, that builds you up, that strengthens you, that's preparing you? You need that in every area of your life and they don't always have to be the same person. The person who mentors me in the faith might not be the person who mentors me in finances, might not be the person who mentors me in, in exercise may not be the same person who mentors me as a husband. But for every area that you hope to be excellent in, there has to be somebody that pours into you and pours into you and then decides when they're ready to give you the charge, the challenge, and the change. And then he says to Timothy, if that were not startling enough, if that were not enough to digest, that I have to be what I saw and that I have to show up in the world as my teacher and not as his student. That I have to put on my daddy's shoes and make them fit. That I have to be a grown woman. That I have to be a grown man. That I have to stand up to life. If that were not daunting enough and intimidating enough and enough to make you fall down on your knees and humbling enough to say, God, without you, I can do nothing. Without you, I would fail. Without you, I'd be like a ship without a sail if it were not enough to make you do that. If it were not enough to drop you to your knees, if it is not enough to get you off of Instagram, making all kinds of crazy posts because you think this is fun. This is not fun. Like This is life and death. This is not about you. This is about Jesus. This is not about getting people to be attracted to you. This is about getting people to be attracted to Jesus. This is not that willy nilly stuff that I see passing for ministry today. It's not. Reproof, reboot with all long suffering is not this willy nilly stuff that we see to get attention. It's easy to get satisfied where we are. When we've seen blessing and favor, God's protected us, promoted us, opened doors. We can start thinking that we've seen our best days. But God never does his greatest feats in your yesterdays. They're always in your future. The scripture says the path of the righteous gets brighter and brighter. 
What God has in front of you is more fulfilling, more rewarding than anything you've seen in the past. But sometimes before it gets brighter, it gets darker. Before we see more than enough, we go through a season of not enough. There are times the good has to come to an end to make room for the best. Doesn't make sense to us. Why did my business slow down? Why did this person walk away? Why did this door close? It's all a part of God's plan. He's shaking things up to move you out of the good into the best. If he didn't close those doors, you wouldn't see the fullness of your destiny. We may not like the process. It's uncomfortable. We're doing the right thing, but the wrong thing is happening. We're working hard, but not seeing increase. Thoughts will tell you it's never going to get better. Don't believe those lies. That disappointment, the breakup, the slow season didn't stop what God has for you. It's getting you in position for favor that you've never seen. Your relationship didn't work out. God knew it was going to happen. That didn't catch him off guard. He's already lined up someone better than you can imagine. Your business has slowed down. The contract didn't work out. That setback is not stopping you. It's setting you up for new levels. You're going to come out not like you were before, but healthier, stronger, promoted, increased. John chapter 2, Jesus was at a wedding in Galilee. There was a big celebration with hundreds of people. Everything was going great until they ran out of wine. His mother came and told him about the problem. And Jesus had not performed any miracles in public up to this point, but she knew something about Jesus that others didn't know. She told the staff to do whatever he asked them to do. There were six large water pots over to the side. They held 30 gallons each. Jesus told the men to go fill them with water. And I can imagine them thinking, what good is that going to do? But instead of talking themselves out of it, they filled the containers and brought them back to Jesus. He said, now dip some out and take it to the host of the wedding, to the man that's in charge. Verse 9 says, when the host tasted the water that was now wine, he called the groom over and said, usually a host serves the best wine first. Then when everyone is full, doesn't know any better, he brings out the less expensive wines, but you have saved the best until now. You have something special. You're born for such a time as this. This is a time that we need to be concerned, but not consumed with fear, as many people are consumed with fear right now, or many people are being reckless and just don't take this seriously. Your life has value. Your life is a gift. Life is God's gift to us, and how we live our lives is our gift to God. And so as you look at yourself, look at your goals and dreams, this is a time to look at yourself as, as Angelica talked about and, and, and put in the work, put in the, the work that's necessary to develop yourself mentally and emotionally and spiritually. And part of what I'm doing now is spending a lot of time creating new ideas, creating ways to, to earn money virtually from the computer because the computer eliminates geography. So I'm not getting on any more planes over 11,000 people have tested positive flying. Well, that's not happening to me. So what I'm doing now, if you got a story, we're going to share with you how to tell that story, how to create an experience with that story, how to hold attention with that story and transform people individually and collectively. And the, you know, the proof is in the pudding. That's why I want you to see someone that has been in the program and, and see how well she handled herself. And you can do that too. The, 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 just the statement by Steve Jobs, the storyteller is the most powerful person in the world. Why? Because stories transform people. People hunger more than for food and for, for water. They hunger for stories that can lift their spirits, particularly now when you're inundated with all of like 5,000 hits on our minds every day, advertising different messages, trying to get territory, set up camp, 
and renting space in our minds. We have to carve out a place that we take care of ourselves. I'm encouraging you, one, listen to positive messages. Two, turn off the tell live vision. Three, do something creative. I'm taking singing lessons, I'm training speakers, and I'm exercising. I'm about to take yoga and qigong and working on me. And I'm looking for someone who have some edges that can cut my kid flat top.